Hello, I'm Jessica Lyley and this is Aussie Wristwatch where I talk about watches. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of my newest finds, not in the collection, but I get very excited every time I walk into the store and get it. And that is the Breitling Premier B25 Totora in 42mm. Now, before we get started, please hit the like button and the magic red button and subscribe to this channel. Help me out with those YouTube algorithm gods. And if you like it, please tell your friends so we can start a chat. Now, this design of this watch is classic in that for me, it really kind of also looks like the little stepsister of the Patek Philippe 5270P. Now, I've done a little spot on that on my Instagram, just a little compare of the contrast of the both, and we'll have a look at them side by side in this video. But honest to God, these two watches could have been separated at birth. Okay, let's get into it and let's delve first of all into the specifications. So with an open case back, it reveals an automatic movement powering the Detora. The Breitling Detora runs on a B25 caliber and it's COSC certified chronograph that has approximately 48 hours of power reserve. The movement's also based on a um, Concepto C2000 movement and, you know, designed by Concepto at the watch factory, it's an efficient modular complication. It uses a vertical clutch layout with column wheel instead of a laser, sorry, instead of a lesser regarded lever based movement. The caliber, as mentioned, Breitling B25 manufacturer, so it's an in house movement, self winding mechanical with the powers of 48 hours. Now, the calendar is the very cool day, date, month, and moon phase. I don't know about you guys. I don't really need a watch with a complication that has a moon phase, but it really fucking excites me. So I think it's part of the reason I love this watch so much. It's got one of those completely unnecessary complications, but it just has that very epic, cool factor to it. Now your diameter is 42 millimeters, which for me is about the sweet spot, about the smallest I'll go on a watch. This here is 47, it's big, but it's actually, at 42 mil, a chunky watch for some, uh, and it makes it chunky because it's a 15.3 millimeter um, height. And uh, it means that because it's a dress watch, right? Most people are gonna wear this when they're dressed up. I know it sounds ridiculous, but think tuxedo or just think about some dude in his business environment or a chick for that matter, because I also used to wear French cuff shirts and getting them under something that's really high is actually a pain in the ass. So that's going to put some people off for sure. But having said that doesn't put me off. So we're going to soldier on. Look, this watch really pays homage to three generations of inventors. And I'm talking about Leon, Gaston and Willie Breitling. The Premier de Tora is the most refined Breitling chronograph. And it's because it's got a complete calendar and moon phase. I mean, Willie Breitling said it himself. He said it's unmistakable stamp of impeccable taste. I mean, I don't know about you guys, not a lot of hubris going on there, but I'm going to roll with that. Now it features a rectangular chronograph pusher and Arabic numerals. The Heritage Revive Premier displays a variety of elegant design details, such as grooves on the case sides, open sapphire case back and vintage inspired hands. In particular, the numerals for me kind of cut out in sections and it looks weird, but I actually really like that as a feature. It just kind of gives it a little bit of a, um, like a little bit of panache and individuality to it. So I didn't have a problem with that at all. What I probably just given I have a little bit of OCD, didn't love as much is on the case, you've got the tachometer and it's kind of pushed and cut off in terms of the dial. Um, and it just doesn't quite, 
it's not neat in my view but you know at the end of the day it's all good so let's talk about let's talk about what i like i love the elegance of this watch i'm not really a dress watch person per se but this watch is just absolutely stylish and stunning for me and i'd happily wear this on my wrist honestly just kind of as a dressed up casual watch but i could definitely find a home for it on the odd occasion that i get out of my sweatpants and have to get into a suit and look pretty funky i think it's timeless and it's effortless style i don't think this watch in my view even with that they call it copper but i call it salmon with the salmon dial i honestly don't think that's going to date for me i just think it's a beautifully elegant watch that's going to withstand the test of time and look great in the collection now it's smaller in diameter, but it's still chunky. We've talked about that. I don't mind that, but I think that's going to go in what people don't like in their pile pretty quickly. Look, I also love that it's value for money. Now, when I say that, I, I'm saying that with like tongue in cheek, because at the end of the day, it's about 16 to 18 grand, depending on whether you get copper or pink gold. So it, it's not cheap. In fact, it's really fucking expensive for most people, including me. But if we're comparing it to the Patek, which is $250,000, well, then you're getting a ton of watch for that money and you're getting a ton of watch for that money regardless. So that's why I've thrown it in the value for money bucket from that point of view with complications and what you actually get. <clears throat> what I don't like Hey, this is me guys. I wear a bigger watch. 42 mil for me is oh, a little bit on the smaller side. In fact, my wife is like, doesn't want me to get the watch. She doesn't think it looks as good on my wrist as some of the bigger watches do. As I mentioned before, the tachymeter is almost cut off slightly around the dial. So for me, just for completeness and neatness of look, it doesn't entirely work for me. But at the end of the day, honestly guys, that is not a deal breaker. Look, overall, I'd happily have this watch in my collection. Don't get me wrong. If I had the money to go out and buy this watch tomorrow, um, along with other watches that I want in my collection, I would do that and I'd be very happy with this purchase. It's a cool watch. It's exceptionally elegant. It, as I mentioned, what you get is good value for your money. And overall, in terms of a dress watch, I think Breitling's done an absolutely fantastic job at putting this watch in their range. Um, that's it. I hope you liked it. Please, again, hit the like button if you like what I've got to say. Comment. Let me know your thoughts about this watch, if you've seen it in the store, or if you own this watch. Please tell me what you think. And don't forget to tune in next time. I've got a number of cool videos on the way. Mix of reviews and mix of history. A little bit of technical in there. And we're going to cover off on some really famous watches.